Lord God. Shake off some of our earthly cares and, and worries, Lord God, and draw in closer to you. Father, I think it's a privilege that um, it's not something that we have to conjure in ourselves, but we can ask you to do that work in us. How blessed are we as a people? Thank you, Lord God. Continue to strengthen us by your grace, and we give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everybody, we're going to sing about the love of the Lord. We want you to join us. Lift your voices and sing this song like you know it. His love is better than life. Everlasting. Your love is everlasting, it's an everlasting love. Your mercy is as new as every rising of the sun. And your loving kindness, loving kindness, better than life. Yes, it is.
church. I'm gonna dance for you like nobody's watching, nobody's watching me dance for you. rise up in you right now. Huh. Come on, say this. Lord, I'm going to dance for you. Lord, I'm going to sing for you. Lord, I'm going to worship you. I'm not afraid, not ashamed. Lord, I'm going to dance for you. Lord, I'm going to sing, sing to Lord, I'm going to worship you. I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed. Nothing's going to hinder me.
Dear Father God, all glory and honor to you this morning. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and your peace and your love. Thank you for the opportunity to praise and worship you with new song. Thank you for the people of God, all the faces that I see, all the ears that are listening across the world. I thank you for the opportunity to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ with the people of God. I pray that any man or woman or child that does not know that Jesus Christ is Lord and King and Savior of all, I pray that today that they would hear the word of God. I pray that you would move by your spirit and touch them, help them, change them, convert them, make them into what you have called them to be, just like you have done your saints, just like you do with your children. Father God, I believe you're bringing many sons and daughters to glory. And I pray this morning that you use our time together to strengthen, to edify, to sanctify, uh, and, to, and to, to encourage every single heart, every single listening ear this morning, every single seeing eye. Be magnified, be glorified, enjoy yourself with your lovely people today, and we will give you the glory that you deserve. And that is all the glory and all the glory in the name of Jesus and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Everybody go ahead and unmute and give God a shout this morning. He seriously deserves it. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah name of the Lord. Uh, I am glad to be with you. Once again, I'm, I'm coming to you from, from uh, the East Coast. I'm uh, here uh, just, just uh, caring for and, and, um, and just being company and, and comfort to my mother. Uh, today is about, I think, six weeks since my dad passed. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to report to you, my mom is doing very well. Uh, she is, um, she's hearing from the Lord. And uh, he is walking her through this season that's unlike any other season that she's ever had. And she and my dad were married for 69 years. Um, and, uh, and just all of us is getting used to the fact that, uh, that he's gone on to be with the Lord. And uh, while it settles with us uh, sometimes in a, in a, in a, in a um, I, I, I won't say, yes, it, it settles with us in, in, in grief and settles with us and missing him and settles with us emotionally, it's, it's difficult, but it also settles with us spiritually. And we are very, very um, glad to know and have all the confidence that we could possibly have that he is with Jesus. And and, and my mom said it just in, in her speaking to the Lord, uh, she realized uh, that uh, if my dad could come back, he would not. <laughs> he would tell her that he's waiting for her to come where he is because truly where he is, is a much, much, much better place. And uh, it's important for us to have that perspective, to know that, uh, that to know what it is to, to, to leave this plane and to be with the Lord, to leave this place and to be found in the Lord and to have confidence that those that we love when they leave this place are going to be found with the Lord. And then when we leave this place, we'll be found with them. So we will see each other again and we will rejoice uh, in, 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 in terms that are inexpressible here on earth. I'm sure my dad right now is seeing things, experiencing things that, um, that he really wouldn't have words for to explain to us, but he would say, uh, that uh, he is not willing to come back here, but he is very, very willing to see us where he is. And uh, I look forward to that day. I hope we all look forward to that day. And uh, I thank you so much for once again, all your prayers and all your support and, um, and all your, your encouragement and, and uh, condolences and kind words. Um, and my family has, has really been blessed and um, has, uh, has been the beneficiary um, of so much love. And so much, so many expressions of support um, over these last months. So, thank you so much for your forbearance. And my mom always says she thanks my wife for uh, lending me to her in this season. So, um, I, I will thank my church also <laughs> for the opportunity uh, to to serve my um, my family's, my parents' needs um, the way that um, that that you have helped and made a way for. Um, thank you for partnering uh, with me. Um, as I follow the Lord's leading as it pertains to, to, to that part of my family. So with that being said, uh, there's a word from heaven for you this morning. And it's important for me to share it and to share it um, in its fullness. Uh, I believe that the Lord is really, truly 
going to speak to you and to give you exactly what you need at this moment. It's a rhema word, which means it's a right now word for you. No, he just froze uh, on us. So until he comes back, can you lead us in a prayer for um, Sharice? She has um, a doctor's appointment in the morning to get some test results. And um, if you could just lead us off in prayer, I'd appreciate it. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, on behalf of our sister, Sharice, Lord. We lift her up to you today in prayer. And Father, we know, praise God, that she's your child. We know you've got a plan for her. And Father, as she gets her test done and gets the results back, Lord, we just pray that the results will be exactly what she's looking for and even more. Thank we you, pray, sir. Lord, for your healing touch upon her body. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Let her healing, praise God, be an example of your power, yes, praise Lord. God, towards your people when we ask believing in your name. So, Father, we believe for a sister this morning that you have delivered her, that you have set her free through the power of your Holy Spirit. And Father, we know that whatsoever we ask in your name, believing, we shall receive. Thank so on sir. behalf of our sister, Lord, we ask that your love, your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your healing would be with her in every single way, Lord, as she awaits these results, praise God, from this testing today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. You're the great healer. You're the great physician. Praise God. And there's nothing that is impossible for you. The impossible is nothing for you, Lord. And nothing surely is impossible for you. So, Father, by faith, we believe with our sister and we trust with her that the work is done and yes. that you have completed the work in her concerning her healing. In the mighty, exalted name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. Uh, I, 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 did I freeze earlier? Can you hear me now? Okay, well, good, good, good. Now I'm gonna. I'm sorry to spring this to spring this on you, but I would like um, I'd like one of our sisters, uh, Diane, uh, begin. If you will pray uh, as the Lord leads us, uh, <laughs> I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I know you're a praying person. So <laughs> if you will pray that the Lord leads us in in and in, uh, in, in the, the, the rest of our time together this morning. Surely. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We we just come before you this morning in, in um, worship and praise and, and give you all honor and glory uh, for our time together and, and everything that you do in us and through us, Lord. We just pray that it, we represent you and represent you well. Lord, um, I pray your spirit fall down on us and especially pastor as he delivers a word, a rhema word as he says for today, that it would um, that it would enlighten us and encourage us and uh, just lead us on the path that you would take us. We, um, we do, I do also pray Lord for each and every member of Father's house that they would be healthy and um, and well and rested in these days. Um, we thank you, Jesus, for pastors continue, continued uh, consistency in all that he does for the Father's house as well for his family's house. Um, we praise you and give you all glory for, for everything that you do in and through us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Diane, thank you, Diane. Thank you, George. Uh, one more time, beloveds, unmute. God deserves a shout this morning. He really does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, beloveds. So here we go. The God, the Lord has given me a word for you. And uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, warn you, <laughs> this word really is about me and it is about what I do. And I don't, when I say, so I wanna, want to, first of all, just ask your forbearance for the personal references because it, it, I'm gonna to continue to talk about what it is to speak and what it is to speak well. 
but I want to stand for the uh, I want to come to you from the standpoint of how a teacher of the word speaks and speaks well and what you as the, the, the sheep of his hand, the people of his pasture, what you ought to be um, listening for and, and ought to be able to rightly expect from a person that, that uh, you um, make the decision that to get to give the authority to speak the things of God in your life. Okay, so this morning is going to be interesting. <laughs> so his pastor is pulling things together there. Um, the word that he has to share is um, informational, but it's also going to be instructional. And so that um, um, in your walk going forward, you'll have the criteria set um, as to who to allow to speak into your life. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> How'd you disappear? What, what I may ask you to do is to um, turn off the Wi-Fi if you have any other devices by you, to just turn off the Wi-Fi on those and just to keep um, uh, whatever you have on your laptop. You should be fine keeping the Wi-Fi on there, but in okay. that way to kind of hopefully clear up the connection. But I mean, hey, we'll make this work. We got everything we need. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, bear, for bearing with me this morning. I, uh, the the, the Wi-Fi connection in this house is really good, so I'm not sure. I'm going to disconnect my phone from Wi-Fi here and just uh, clear up as much uh, uh, Wi-Fi as I possibly can in, in, in the house here. So uh, that just means I have to preach quickly. Um, but uh, but I, I don't know I don't know how much you heard of, of what I was saying before, but I want to speak from the standpoint of a teacher and how I speak and why it is so important for you to know what the Bible requires of me. Um, and I, for me to know what the Bible requires of me when it comes to speaking into the lives of what means the most to Jesus Christ. So let me start with that. You mean more to the Father than anything, anywhere, at any time. And that is easily provable because Jesus gave his life for you. He did not give his life for the stars. He did not give his life for nature. He did not give his life for the, the, the mountains and the seas. And, and uh, uh, he gave his life for you because you are a reflection of who God is being made in his image. You remember in the first chapter of Genesis, uh, God said to God, God said, the father said to the son, said to the spirit, said, let us make man in our image. Now, I know he wasn't speaking to the angels because the angels are not creators. They are created just like you and me. So when he said, let us, he was speaking God, the father to the son, to the spirit. It was a conversation between the three of them because they are co-creators and they are all God and they are one God. They are God individually and they are God corporately. Their God is one. And then when you say God in its most classical sense, you and I are saying God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. They spoke to each other and said, let us make man in our own image. And, and they did. They made us in their spiritual image. You are spirit, like the Father, like the Son, like the Holy Spirit. And that is your essence. That is essentially who you are. You are spirit. You have a soul, your mind, emotions, and, and wills, the way that we connect and interact with that, with all of those and that which is all around us. We are spirit. We have a soul, our mind, emotions, and will, and we live in a body. So we are spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body as long as we're here on this earth. That is our nature. Our nature is, is, a, is a trinity. We are spirit, we have a soul with which we operate and we live in this body. And so uh, when the spirit and soul depart from the body, that is when, that, that is death. That is when we die. As a, as a body without the spirit is, is, is dead. The scripture tells us the body without the spirit is dead. And you and I are a quickened and enlivened and, and, and we exist through the connection of those three things, which make us one, the spirit, the soul, and the body. And, and the reason I say that is because God has made you in his image. And God is first and foremost, a communicator. Um, and G so much that God calls Jesus Christ, the word of God. In other words, anything God wants to communicate with you is communicated with you through the man, Jesus Christ. There is no other message. There is no other messenger. That any true messenger of the gospel is a messenger of the gospel because Jesus Christ himself has called you and me to that place. And as a messenger of the gospel, I am to be very, very caring and careful on how I speak. And that is incumbent upon everyone who call, who, who claims uh, for reasons legitimate uh, and speaking legitimate claims of speaking for the Lord 
we have to continually keep ourselves before the Lord so that we will be faithful in the ministry he has given us to speak once again into the lives of that which he values the most. He values you. If you can look in the mirror on your wall and better in the mirror of the word of God, and, and you can say that my father values me more than anything else in the universe. He, he values us, those for whom Jesus shed his blood. And uh, so that I believe is without question. And that's a foundation I want to stand on this morning as I speak to you about being a teacher and the responsibilities I have as a teacher of speaking well and speaking in a way that edifies and strengthens and teaches and blesses you. Um, and, and that is my calling. That is my duty. I think it is the most important job in the world. And I don't say that having anything to do with me. I did not call myself to the ministry. God called me to the ministry. I believe it's the most important job in the world because once again, I'm speaking into the lives of that which Jesus loves most. And that is you. You don't have to unmute, but go ahead and say, say amen. Amen. I am important to the Lord. And, and you are. You are very important. Therefore, um, I have to conduct myself and speak in such a way that uh, edifies you and, and just reveals the Lord uh, to you in his ways and, and his words and in such a way that you will be able to say one day that just listening to me speak, and we're speaking about speech in this series, listen to me speak um, has had the kind of, of has had an eternally um, beneficial effect in your life. You should hear things from me if you give me the honor of speaking into your life on behalf of the Lord, you should be hearing things from me regularly that literally change your life, that literally change the way that you think, that the way that the way that you communicate, the way that you interact with people, the way that you interact with God. And it's not because I'm not sufficient for this in myself at all, but because of the calling on my life and the anointing that God has put on my life and men and women who do what I do, the things that we say ought to make an eternal difference. And you ought to be able to tell me in return what I have told you that has made an eternal difference in the way that you see things, the way that you hear things, the way that you process things, uh, especially when it comes to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, if I teach you well, there'll be some things that I share with you that will challenge everything that you thought about God not challenge them in that you were wrong or that, that you were poorly taught in the past, but that bring you forward through challenging what you know so God can bring you and me forth to what he wants us to know. So what we know about God and, and what God wants us to know about him are two different things because his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. But he wants very much to bring you and I to a place on a higher plane where we are hearing him and then receiving the truth about him on his terms and not our terms. And that is my job. My job is to represent the interests of Jesus Christ in your life. Not my interests, not any political interests, not any cultural interests, not any national interests, not any patriotism, not any flag waving, not, not, not any, any standing on any soapbox and making a point or being right about anything. Or the, the, my own righteousness is like filthy rags. But I'm speaking to you about the righteousness of Christ. And if I am faithful to the ministry that I've been given, that will never waver. And you will always, if you if you listen to me 10 years from now, if I'm faithful to the things that God has given me, you will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ without compromise and without agenda. And that, so I'm speaking to you as, as, as those who listen to a teacher and who receive from teachers. And I thank God I'm not the only teacher in the church. I'm not, I'm not for a moment saying I'm the only teacher you should listen to. That the, uh, I let you discern that. My encouragement to you is to stay in the word of God, in the house of God, in the closet of prayer so that you will know that you know what you are hearing is God. And you'll know that you know what when you're hearing something that's not God. And so um, I know I just trust God in you to keep you on point and, and on, on the righteous path and, and to keep your ears and your heart open to what you're hearing. Um, so it is important for people who do what I do, men and women who do what I do, uh, to see God, I believe, in this way, uh, the way that the, the, the word presents us. Uh, presents to us so that we are always on point once again doing things exactly the way God would have the, us to do them as it pertains to speaking well into your lives. Um, Jackie, if you will put up this morning scripture, it is out of uh, Ephesians chapter 4 uh, verses 11 um, and forward and uh, and I, I want to speak of, of uh, to get into a conversation Paul is having with us about the church and and how uh, the foundation has been laid for us and it's been laid for us so well and so sweetly. And he says this in verse 11, Ephesians 4, 
And he, he being Jesus, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Now, beloved ones, that is quite the run-on sentence. And Jackie, leave that, if you'll leave that on the screen. I just want to speak briefly through it um, expositorily. And, and, and so the, once again, we are on the same page and everything I share with you from this point forward stands on the firm foundation of God's word. Um, he himself being Jesus gave some, assigned some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Now there's discussion and there's argument and there's agreement and disagreement on whether the apostolic ministry, for instance, is still extant in the church today, rather the prophetic ministry, the way it was in Bible days, uh, the ministry of evangelists and pastors and teachers, if they all are active and if they all are embodied by men and women uh, in the church today. And my unequivocal answer to that uh, question is yes, <laughs> yes. God operates through the apostolic ministry. Uh, God operates through the prophetic ministry. He operates through evangelists. Uh, he, he operates through pastors and teachers. And the reason this is here in the scriptures in the New Testament, because these are New Testament realities. So I, I, won't, I don't have time to get into, get into that specifically right now, but I just want to let you know going forward that I believe all those ministries are very much active today. And they're active in those that God has chosen, not those who we have chosen but those who God has chosen, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And why? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. I, I believe it is thought that I am to do the work of the ministry because I'm a minister, but my job is not to do the work of the ministry. My job is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. You've been chosen, beloved. God's not going to unchoose you. And it is my job to speak to you and to teach you and to bless you in ways that, that equip you to do the work of the ministry because you are God's ministers. You are God's servants. And let's take that word ministry and just call it service and servanthood. You are equipped to serve. You are at your best when you are serving. I want to say that again, say that clearly because that's the word the Lord spoke to me clearly a couple months ago. He said, you are at your best when you're serving others. And I want to say that to you, it's my job to get you, to help to equip you, to help get you to your best, that you would know that you are at your best when you're serving others, not yourself. God will take care of you. <laughs> and, and, and I know he has taken care of you, so you can say amen. Uh, but you, I am building you up that you can serve the God's purposes in the lives of other people. For the edifying of the body of Christ, and the body of Christ being the church, the body of Christ being the local church, the church, the church universal, the church, the citywide church, the statewide church, the nationwide church, the worldwide church, for the edifying of the body of Christ, because you are members of Christ's body. You are you are members of his body, and the body is only as healthy and well equipped as its members until we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Now, let's stop right there. That's what makes us the church of Jesus Christ. Not that we agree on every earthly thing or any earthly thing, but that we come together as people of faith, people who believe in the man, Jesus Christ. I'm talking about faith. I'm not talking about faith and what you can have and what the, what the word promises you and what people tell you you can have because the Bible says you, that's, that's a different, that's not, that's not a faith that, that Paul is talking about here. The faith points us to the man, Jesus Christ, that we might know him and know him more deeply every day. A, a living channel of relationship and conversation between us and a living God that we cannot see but we serve as if we can. So we come to the unity of the faith when we all agree on the man, Jesus Christ, that there's no other way, no other word but him. 
and the knowledge of the Son of God. So the faith that I believe in the knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, beloved, the spiritual knowledge. Um, academic knowledge is fine. Um, scholastic studies are fine. And Bible studies, Bible schools, seminaries, so on, they're fine. But you are his because of relationship. And, and uh, I note that none of the apostles were formally educated, except per perhaps Paul. And Paul had to die to all that formal education to actually receive revelation from God. Once again, I'm not saying anything negative about formal Christian education. God bless you if that's the path in which he sent you. I'm saying that we're going to come to be with God wants us to be the knowledge of the Son of God does not come through books. The knowledge of the Son of God comes through personal relationship with the Word of God, who is Jesus Christ. To a perfect man, uh, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When the scriptures speak about perfection, it's not talking about human perfection. There are no perfect humans. And so therefore God is not looking for human perfection in you. God already has human perfection and he has it in Jesus Christ. So he's not looking for human perfection in you. He's looking for Jesus Christ in you. Let me say that again. God is not looking for human perfection, not looking for you to answer all the questions on the test right, not looking for you to get 100 out of 100, not looking for you to not make a mistake on the spelling bee, to not, not looking for you uh, to, to jump through any hoops that anybody would put through you, put before you. But God is looking for the Christ in you and the day in which he, he measures all men and, and judges all of our lives, what he's looking for, the measure that he's looking for is a measure of Jesus Christ in you. So when you and I become uh, being perfected, that means we're being completed. That means we are being matured. That mean, God, means God is pouring out his wisdom and his health and strength on us so that we have every need, every need in our life is met because of the man, Jesus Christ. And we know that and we come to the full knowledge of that and we come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When you are full in Christ and, and when Christ is fully realized in you, that is the woman. That is the man that God is looking for. And that is the woman and that is the man that me, I, I as, as, as a pastor and a teacher, that is who I'm called to minister to. And this is the goal which I'm called to in my ministry to you. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. It is a heartbreaking thing to see so many churches and so many ministers and so many folks being drawn into politics and into legal matters and into national matters and patri patriotic matters and those types of things, no matter what country you're in. It is a sad, sad thing to see us turning over our microphones to motivational speakers and politicians and, 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 and folks who may very well have something good to share, but there's a huge difference between what is good and what is God. And we are called to what is God exclusively in the house of the Lord. And, and as somebody in my position is never to turn over the opportunity to speak into your life to someone who is not one of these five ministers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You can get your news, you can get your politics, you can get your culture somewhere else. But in the house of the Lord and from the teachers in the house of the Lord, the pastors in the house of the Lord, you are to get that which is from God and that alone. And without any agenda whatsoever, without any other goal or aim other than the, what is being presented to you right here, that I speak in such a way that builds you up and presents you to Jesus Christ. And there is no equivocation whatsoever. There, there is, there is no, um, there's no mixture whatsoever that it is a pure offering that our time together is about Jesus Christ. And when I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to you about him and about nothing and no one else that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro with, with every uh, about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men because if if the saints can can be fooled they will be fooled the reason we hold so tightly to Jesus is because the scripture tells us that in the last days that that there will be so many people doing all kinds and saying all kinds of things signs and wonders impressive things even that would draw away the children of God if it were possible I am to minister into your life in such a way that would make it impossible for you to fall into that trap because you know Jesus Christ for yourself. And you know the word, chapter and verse, you know that God has spoken to you and you are holding on, we together are holding on to what God has shown us and what God has spoken to us so that we are not carried away by words of doctrines or the trickery of any man who claims to be godly, but in his fruit, obviously we can see he and she are not. 
Trees are known by their fruit. And if we will, will look at anything else other than that, then we will be tricked into following things in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord that we ought not follow. Uh, hear that as a warning for me. In the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, hallelujah, speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. In other words, all of us are responsible for the health of this body, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. This is a family, beloveds. This is a family. It is God's family. It's not my family. Uh, we call our church the Father's house because it is his house, and we all are sons and daughters of daddy and we all bear his likeness. Therefore, we all should be supplying our part to the health of this cell of the body of Christ in which he's placed us. And according to the effective working by which every part does a share, cause the growth of the body for the edifying or building up of itself in love. Now, love is the measure of all things, beloveds, and God is love. Thank you, Jackie. Um, and so when we, when we take, a, take a look at what my job is, um, I just want you to, to never have uh, uh, any doubt whatsoever on what the place that, that I should have in your life. Um, I, I may very well be your pastor, your teacher, or someone that you listen to because you trust that I'm speaking the, the word of God and the things of God accurately. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, uh, the way that ought to affect you is so that when I finish speaking, you're talking about Jesus and you're not talking primarily about me. I, I hope that, that, that you appreciate uh, the pastoral ministry of, of Pastor Suzanne and, and myself in your life. And I, I hope that you appreciate it because we always keep it about Jesus Christ, amen. So I wanna share something with you that I wrote um, some time ago. Uh, and as I was studying, I, I, I brought back up because um, I want you and I um, you, I want, I want you and I to be on the same page going forward. I want to make it clear to you what my agenda is. <laughs> I want to make it clear to you what I'm resigned to and what I am uh, connected to and what I am committed to. Okay, and I'm committed to the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and the opportunity to bless you with what he has shown me. Uh, and, and so um, I, these words I'm sharing with you, Jackie's going to put them on the screen, but these words I'm sharing with you are my heart um, toward, and, and how, especially as it pertains to how I teach and how I speak to you, my heart and my calling, how I understand that. And um, I'm going to post these. So if you ever want to hold me accountable to anything when it comes to pastoring and teaching you, um, I'm giving you that today. And like I say, forgive me for, for the personal references, but I think it it will be a blessing to you because God has blessed us with personal relationships. I'm blessed to know you all and to, and to know your lives and to, and to witness your growth. And, and to, we struggle together and we praise together and we live together, we eat together, we love together and we make music together and give God glory together. So um, as your pastor, I, I want to make myself and keep myself strictly accountable to you um, for what God has spoken. And I wanna share what he has spoken in my words and I want you to have those words and always, always be able to hold me accountable to them. So I'm just going to read through this. Um, I think it'll be um, a blessing and hopefully be edified for you. Why I teach. Uh, and, and once again, from Ephesians 4, the passage we read, one, one verse from that 4.13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. And that word is generic, to perfect men and women, to, to, to a perfect person to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And uh, here are my thoughts, beloveds. Let me say, first and foremost, I teach because God has given me this charge, his mission, his permission to teach his word to men. I teach because he has called and sent me to do so. And, and I desire to be faithful to that calling. I teach so that men might be encouraged to pursue and obtain the life-changing power of God's word. I seek to use words that draw attention to him, words that can be grasped and remembered, 
words that the listener can possess for himself or herself. I teach to make and leave an impression, something that remains, something to contemplate, something to hide away and to come back to at the opportune time, and something that commends men and women to God. I teach because there's so much more to know and understand about the Savior. Quoting from Philippians 3.10, Paul speaking, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and be conformed to his death. I teach because I want men to see the Lord for who he says he is and so that they hearken to the truth and the truth alone. I teach because there is much confusion from false teaching and the record must be set straight. I teach because someone is praying that the Lord will make his word and his ways clear. And I trust I have the chance to help straighten his path. I teach because God's children are desperate for his word. I teach the word of God that the lost would hear and be found, the found would be saved, the saved would be sanctified, the saint justified, the just glorified, that many sons and daughters be brought to glory, to the glory of the Father, in the Son, and by the Holy Spirit. I teach because God loves me, and I teach because I love God. I teach because I love the Word of God. I teach because I love the people of God. I teach so that people will come to the love, to love and know God. I teach be I teach because people need God. I teach because it gives me joy. I teach because it gives God's people joy. I pray about my teaching. I pray for those I teach. I pray the word would settle deeply in their hearts and the roots of the word would grow deep. I pray there will be doers of the word I teach for I teach the word of God. I will not teach another word, another gospel. But there is no other name under heaven that saves and sanctifies men but the name of the Lord. Thank you for receiving my teaching. May the Lord sovereignly use them to produce Christ in you, the hope of glory, in humility and appreciation. So thank you for you know this allowing me to, to share my heart and those thoughts with you when it comes to my speech and my speech in terms of, of, of my ministry. Um, of his ministry in me. And um, I, I thank God for the opportunity, the, the, the revelation of wisdom and knowledge and the ability to hear him for exactly what I need to share with you. Um, I, my prayer is that whatever season that you're in, that uh, from the fruit of this teaching, there is nourishment for you and you are strong and you are wise and you are rightly directed in your day um, because of uh, the teaching, uh, partly because of the teaching um, which you have received from me. It's most important to me that um, that I teach you well and that one day when I stand before the Lord and, and you stand before the Lord, um, I, I hope, for instance, to be in, 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 as a witness uh, as you come and stand before God and, 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 uh, and just be someone that you look at and kind of acknowledge and say, Lord, that brother there, um, he helped me to get to this point. Uh, he said some things that opened my eyes and opened my heart to help me to get to the point uh, of agreeing with the word of God and living a life uh, where uh, the Lord himself can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Uh, enter into the joy of your father. And that's really the only thing that matters to me uh, it, about you. Uh, the only thing that matters to me about you is that I take advantage of the opportunity to speak to you and live before you in such a way that it commends you to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And there is nothing else that matters to me at all, but that you know the Lord and that you are known by the Lord. So I'm not going to hold you any longer because I, I as we talk about what it is to speak well and to speak wisely in our day, um, I, 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 I'm not only talking to you, <laughs> I'm talking to myself. And, uh, and so as I, as I speak uh, to you specifically as a pastor, there's a standard to which I hold myself and it's a standard of the word of God. And you have the expression of how I interact with that so that you have a real solid expectation of what you can and will hear from me going forward. And if there's ever any question about that, um, please go back and, 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 and read this that, that, that I wrote and say, pastor, Let's talk about this because this is a standard. And for those of you who are calling 
uh, who have a calling on your life to teach. I believe it's very important for you to do that same passage and to yourself put in your own words why it is you do what you do, why it is you speak into the lives of God's people, because anyone who takes it upon themselves to speak in the name of the Lord is going to be held to a stricter judgment. You all know James 3.1, and James says, and he's speaking about the tongue, speaking about a speech. He says, I would not that many of you be teachers because yours is the stricter judgment. That is a very, very important thing for you to know and to understand that yours is the stricter judgment when you take it upon yourself to speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and say that the Holy Spirit has, has, has ratified uh, and confirmed your calling. When you say that, then uh, you and I ought to be glad about the fact that ours is a stricter judgment and, and also at the same time to receive that with tremendous amount of godly fear and gravity. Uh, because God is going to hold me accountable for what I say to you and how I live before you. And it's a sad thing for me to minister to you the things of God uh, and myself, uh, not handle my own life in such a way so that, as Paul says, I've ministered all these things of God to you that I myself become a castaway. I have to be very, very careful about how I love and how I speak. I thank you for your forbearance in the days that I've said things that, that I could have said better or maybe could not have said at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. And uh, so I, I, I apologize for over the years, if there's ever been anything that is said, not that necessarily made you uncomfortable, but once again, something that was said that shouldn't have been said, uh, or, or the way it was said. And, and I hope there's not a lot of that. <laughs> but anyone who speaks for years and year after year after year, anyone who quote unquote gets paid to talk, you know, um, is held to a, a higher standard. And, um, and I thank you for your forbearance and your forgiveness if there's any time that that standard um, has not been lived up to and lived up to well. That any time that God would say that that you should say you should have said it differently. There was one time that God spoke to me after a Sunday service many years ago. He said these he said to me clearly, Eric, watch your tone. Watch your tone. The second thing he said along that vein, and the last thing I'll share with you, uh, 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 is is that Eric, keep your hands and your mouth off my bride. Okay, that's an important thing. I say I want to say that to every teacher. Keep your hands and your mouth off his bride. The church is not your church. The church is his church. And we are not ministering to the people of God for any end of our own. We're ministering to the people of God for his ends and his interests alone. And the moment we mix the foolishness of the world, the moment we've started judging the world and getting ourselves so involved with the world and putting up our marquees and wanting to be known and recognized by the world as something significant, then we are then we become adulterous in our ministry, in that we are beginning to seed out the things of God to people and things that are not from God or about God. Things that once again will come in and claim to be about God and for God, uh, because trust me, everybody, every four every spirit out there would like to have its way and wherewithal with you because you are what's most precious to God. You are blessed. You are favored. You have the joy of the Lord. You are talented, skilled, faithful, a gifting, a, a gift wherever you go. And, and, and the world and the enemy can get his hands on that. That is our defeat because God has put us in heavenly places and our, uh, our concerns are heavenly concerns. And if we get heavily involved in earthly concerns and earthly arguments, which I have failed at, at, at different times and done so before the Lord just snatched me back to what my calling is. If we do that, then we compromise the body of Christ and we make it, we bring it down from its heavenly place and we, we make it earthly and we make it about what people say and what people think and what people want instead of being exclusively, exclusively committed to the man, Jesus Christ. So my voice is one, uh, if, if, if I use it well, my words always call you back to that which is most important, and that is your relationship to the man, Jesus Christ. He is your husband. He is your husband. Uh, if you have a husband, Christ is his head, and he, is, is, he should be behaving in your life as Christ does in the church. If you're single, he is your husband. And you should be submitted to him 
as one that is, has authority over your life and one who's, who's there to edify and strengthen and bless and keep you. And, 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 and at my voice should always be one that's pointing you to him and to no one and nothing else. So thank you so much uh, for listening and supporting and loving and commenting and asking questions and, and sharing uh, the blessing of the word that comes forth in this house in your life and displaying it and displaying it because the tree is known by its fruit, beloved. So no matter what word I preach, if you and I don't go out and live that word and live it well, that it's just a lot of talk. And, and, uh, and, and, and God did not put us together to talk. He put us together to glorify his son. And the way that we talk and the way that we speak ought to be pointing us to that one direction and one direction only, heavenward, heavenward. My job is not to prepare you for anything on earth, beloved. My job is to prepare you for heaven. If you're prepared for heaven, you do well with everything on earth. <laughs> but we can do well on earth and not at all be prepared for heaven. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So my job and my calling is to point you to Jesus 100% of the time. That's all that I do. I don't have another job. I'm not called to lead uh, to, to lead a crusades. I'm not called to lead conferences and seminars. Praise God for those who do. I'm not saying negative about that, but I'm called in your life to keep you pointed to the man, Jesus Christ. And pray for me. When you pray for me, pray that I would be faithful to that calling. If I'm faithful to that calling, everything else will work out fine. And you and I will be prepared for the day we say yes. But Jesus calls us and we smile and he says, well done. And trust me, if you're living in such a way that you're prepared for that day in heaven, you'll do very, very well on earth. Being faithful to Jesus here on earth is the most important thing that you possibly can do. And you only can do that if you are heavenly minded. You know, uh, it's, it was said for many years, oh, he's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good. Well, let me say this to you. You're no earthly good unless you're heavenly minded. Amen? <laughs> you're no earthly good to God unless you are heavenly minded. And so let's keep our eyes on God and let's keep our feet and our, our bodies, our countenance, everything pointed toward heaven. Let us love each other with a perfect love. Um, and let us come alongside one another. Let us forgive one another because that's what God calls us to do. That's my encouragement to you. Let's forgive one another. Let us not find fault with one another or gather with people who find fault with one another. Uh, let us gather with those who bring the body together, not separate it. And let us not let small and emotional and, and, and petty issues separate us from, that, from that, 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 that walk that God would have us to walk and whom he would have us to walk it. Um, stay in your place, beloved. Let's not wander. Let's stay in the place where God has set us. Let us settle and let, let us let God do in us what he would do. Finally, I'm going to encourage you with this word that the Lord encouraged me with. Um, as, I, as I have been serving my family's needs and, and, and continuing the ministry as I ought over, over these months, um, you know, I was, I was asking the Lord about a particular situation that I need some answers for. Lord, what do you want me to do? 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 And, and over the course of this week, he's speaking gently into my heart that it is not about what I am to do. He didn't say, he said to me, Eric, stop doing, just be, just be. Might I say to you, beloveds, that God not didn't send you where he sent you that you could do things. Now we'll do things, we'll do plenty of things and that's, that's good. But God did not send you primarily where he sent you or placed you where he's placed you so you can do things. He sent you there because of who you are. He sent you there because of who he's made you. And if you and I will just be who he's made us, then all the things will get done. But once again, we can go and do things and people will end up talking about us instead of about Jesus. But we can go and be who he says that we are. And we will do plenty. But at the end of the day, they will see Christ in us and they'll be talking about Jesus. So let me say this to you. Some of you have been asking this question, are we, what do I do? What do I do? Some of us at different places in lives, we don't quite know in our lives, we don't quite know what to do or we have situations that we need God's wisdom and we don't yet know what to do. And we're asking God, what do I do? What do I do? And that is absolutely right. That it's good. And you should ask God, you know, what to do. But let me say this to you. 
Let what you do be founded on who you are. Let your effort be in being who God says that you are, in being the light of the world. Jesus says you are the light of the world. Well, beloveds, let the light shine, and that light in you is Jesus. So if you will just be, if you will just, and for some of you, the Lord, the, the, the way you just be is to stop being antsy, stop demanding answers, stop demanding that things get right or get straight, or he stops doing that, or she stops doing that, and stop telling God what he already knows. Okay, God doesn't need information. He knows what's going on in the world. And stop telling God and us just being, being the solution. You know, we can ask God for a solution or we can be the solution. In other words, when God wants to solve something, he sends you. Why? Because when you walk in, faith walks in, joy walks in, kindness walks in, forgiveness walks in, encouragement walks in. And those other demons, those dark, the, the darkness of the world, the spiritual wickedness that was in that place has to leave because they don't like light. Why? Because the deeds are evil and they don't like light. And when you walk in, you don't have to shove everybody out the door. Your very presence shoves those, th those forces out the door because you are being who God says that you are. So just be beloved. Let God, the seasons are in God's hands. You don't know when things are going to get, quote, back to normal. I don't think there's a nut such thing as normal anymore. <laughs> there is a sense of normalcy, I get that, and routine and, and, and things that we bank on and that's wonderful and good. But let, let's not bank on what's going on around us. Let our confidence be in what's going on within us. The kingdom of heaven is within you. It's not around you. So don't be upset that the kingdom of heaven is not around you and that people are doing all kinds of things out there and this world is going crazy. Well, that world is, that's not the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And you need to make sure that you're not going crazy and what's going on within you is settled because the kingdom of heaven is within. So if God wants to bring kingdom results any place and anywhere among any people. He sends you. Okay, he sends you. And so therefore, keep yourself before the Lord, keep yourself before his word, keep yourself committed to his house, keep yourself committed to prayer. And remember, you are members of the body of Jesus Christ. Do your part and don't do it sometimes. Do it all the time. Do your part. If you said yes to God that you were going to do something, do it. It's a, it's a dangerous thing to promise God that you're going to do something that you don't do. Scripture tells us that very clearly several times in the Proverbs in particular. And Jesus tells us, don't make any God any promises, by the way. And God doesn't need your promises. He's the only promise keeper. So, just, but, but whatever you committed to do before the Lord, do it. Do it. Let your generosity be known. Let your service be known. Let your forgiveness and forbearance be known. Let the word of God be rich between you. Pray for one another. Fellowship with one another. Break bread together. Uh, and, and, and care for one another and stand with one another and stay in touch with one another. Do not wander off. It's a dangerous thing to wander. Be still and know that he is God. Just be. How about that, beloveds? That's a plan right there. <laughs> Just be. Stop fretting. Stop worrying. Stop hurrying. Stop scurrying. Just be. So, I'm finished and I'm going to just be beloved. <laughs> I'm going to just be done. <laughs> Thank you so much for the honor of speaking into your hearts today. I, I hope that was good seed uh, on good ready soil. I know that it was and that it is. Father, in Jesus name, uh, let a sweet, sweet resident blessing be on the Father's house, uh, be on everyone who hears my voice today. Um, in, their, in our particular households, dear God, in the places that we frequent, the places that we work, even the transportation that we take, the travel and mercies be our portion because you're present. And in your presence is fullness of joy. I pray for everyone who has been searching for the, for the next step or, 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 or praying about the next step or, or worried about the next step or, or what stands before them. I pray for them today and I encourage them to just be the child of God that you said that she is, that you said that he is. 
I pray for our young ones, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray that our the, the, the foundation of the word that is in us would alleviate all confusion and our children would not leave our homes looking for love and identity but they would have that love and identity in the Jesus Christ that we minister to them. They would know who they are so they can go into this world as dangerous as it is and just be. And Father God, may we go into the world without agenda, without anger, without bitterness, and, and without a single outcome that, that we deem that we must have. But may we go out into the world with our eyes on the man Jesus Christ, step by step with him, and let the ships so much, so, so to speak, fall where they may, because we're in Christ and Christ is in us and, and, and how things work out is in your hands, dear Lord. We pray, we make our plans as we should, but the results and the word comes from heaven and we're at peace with that truth. We love you, God. Thank you for the sweet songs of praise and worship you've given your church. Thank you for the opportunity to bless you and speak of you in a way that honors you and that, that, that illuminates the world with that revelation of who Jesus Christ was, is, and ever will be. We love you. It is in his holy name and by the leading and the ministry of the sweet spirit that you have sent us. We pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, beloveds. If you agree, go ahead and unmute and give God an agree and shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Beloved, before we go, anybody have um, a, a word that they must share, something that God's put in your heart that would be edifying to everyone? You, uh, just a brief word of encouragement. You, you go ahead and, and raise your hand, Jackie. We'll spotlight you. We'll take a few minutes to do that, and then I'll get you on about your afternoon. Okay, dokie. Let me put this in gallery view too, so I can see everyone. Um, please just raise your hand, or you can even do it on uh, your reactions here um, to speak. It says anyone has something quick to say. Okay, Dwayne, I see you. Katie, do, where are you raising your hand, Katie? Okay, yes, yeah, she is. Okay, um, here, Dwayne, I'll do Katie really quick and then I'll go to you because I think I did see her first. I, I just wasn't sure if she was raising her hand. Um, okay, and here, I'm asking you to unmute here. All right, you're good to go. Okay. Um, I've been suffering really debilitating migraines and I remembered last Wednesday, you know, and they said, and what is it? Oh, God, I can't remember. When you, in God, in love, casts out all things. And then I read later about the lady who touches the garment of Jesus. I mean, the lady who suffered the bleeding disease, who touches God. Government, remember that story? Yes. Yes. And then I, before my feet hit the floor with the migraine, I prayed and I said, Jesus, please, I have faith. And, you know, I'm praying like the woman with garment and in love cast out all things. And sure enough, later on that day, the migraine went away for two or three days. And, you know, I I know that may or may not in tie with the prayer, with the sermon today, mm -hmm. but it was, it was like a miracle to me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. You know, I'm tying the things together, Pastor Eric. Pray right. before you put them feet to the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Let, let's, let's, let's pray for Katie right now. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for increasing my sister's faith. Thank you for um, how trustworthy she is with her challenges, that, that she brings those challenges to your feet and leaves them there and opens her heart and opens her life to whatever you would speak. Lord, bless Katie in a magnificent way where she continues to come closer and closer to you and know you better and to know who she is in Christ better day in and day out, knowing how to pray and knowing how to pray in faith 
and receiving the benefits of the prayer of the faithful. We love her, dear God, and we thank you for a chance to come alongside her every day, calling on the name of the Lord on her behalf. We trust you with her, and we thank you for her in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Katie. And then here, let me add Delane to spotlight here. And I'll ask you to unmute. And yep, you're good to go. All right. Hi, Pastor. Hey, thank you so much for that wonderful word again, man. You know, it's it's like you're reading exactly what I'm uh, reading right now. <laughs> I was uh, just having a, a, a in-depth discussion with the girls about the story of Micaiah. And that's out of uh, First Kings uh, 22 and other chronicles and it's amazing how you were talking about um you know speaking the truth of what the lord has given you to speak and to lead us in that truth right and that was exactly micaiah in the story of uh, ahab and Jehoshaphat, and how they had asked for you know the prophets to come and give them the word of if they should go forth or not to remoth gilead and all 400 came up and said you know basically what the false prophet would say, go for it. And then Micaiah came and said, hey, uh, no, 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 that's not what you should be doing. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate how your heart is for us to come to us and speak the truth and to speak what we need to hear so that we can be the servants that God has called us to be. It is so wonderful and so, so uh, just relieving to know that you are seeking the Lord in that way so that you would guide us in our path of righteousness for his name's sakes. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Dwayne. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Um, well, I want to pray for Sister Constance to, uh, today. Uh, my wife reminded me that I believe she's having a, a surgical procedure this week. Um, honey, if you can unmute and just let us know how we could pray. Well, actually, Constance is with us, and so um, Constance, if if you wouldn't mind, can you unmute? Okay. okay. Yes, here I am again. <laughs> here I am again. But I heard something this morning, and it said that remind me of the twenty third Psalms too. You say, "Go out, walk through the valley of the." shadow of death and they say not that i go to the shadow of death though i walk through the shadow of death so i just took that and say yeah amen mm -hmm. and um i'm encouraged i just look up and i'd be tired <laughs> be like again again oh lord how long <laughs> but, but i still manage to be a, he gives me grace to say amen amen so i Ms. lift him up wisconsin thank you thank you so much first of all for uh that that scripture um i i, I don't know if i shared this with you or, or share this generally but i was talking to my mom um, right when, you know, after, after my dad had passed and, and we had things to do in order to, um, you know, for his for, for arrangements. And there's just a lot of work in front of us and some of us she, she needed to be directly involved in. And then she was, she was feeling down and uh, we had an appointment and she wasn't sure that she could make it because emotionally. And I, I so I went into my bag. I got my I got my oil, <laughs> and I went and, and she 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 got yeah. laid back in the bed. I said, "No, mom." I anointed her with oil, and as I was anointing her, I uh, alluded to the twenty third Psalm, just as you just did. Uh, I said, "Mom, Scripture says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me." Mm -hmm. I said, "Mom, you have to walk." through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say, yea, though I lay here through the valley of shadow of death. <laughs> it says, yea, though I walk. So if we want the comfort uh, mm -hmm. and, and, the, and, the, and the strength of the Lord, deliverance of the Lord, mm -hmm. we have to keep walking. And one thing I can say about you from having known you all these years is that you never stop walking. You never stop walking. That's where your deliverance is. And same with you, Katie. Uh, and and uh, the Lord spoke to me one day on my prayer walk, and he said, he said, Eric, you have walked out of every trap 
Satan has set for you. You have walked out of every trap. Why? Because, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're with me. So I want to encourage everybody, first of all, just keep walking. Don't settle. Don't get lost in your thoughts. Don't get don't get up, up under all of the um, all, all the circumstances. Keep walking. Keep stepping with God. Open the Bible every day. Be in the house, in the Word, in the closet. And as you do, as you keep fellowshipping with believers, keep encouraging folks, even when you're discouraged. As you walk, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, because you are with me. The presence of the Lord will be your gift. It, it will be what God gives you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my uh, mother of the of the church and and sister in Christ. I pray for for uh, uh, Miss Constance, whom we all love, and 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 uh, and we know she loves us. We are family. We are one in Christ, and we're growing together in the things of the Lord. And and through the many challenges, Lord, we've seen her come through, and we've seen her with her hands continually lifted, and her hearts and, and her words lifted toward heaven. She's encouraged so many and served so many, even through all that she has been through. In Jesus' name, uh, dear Lord, just like Katie was speaking earlier, we reach out to touch the hem of your garment, Father God, um, so to speak. And we come before you invited. We come before you, dear God. Um, we don't have to elbow and push our way to get to you. Um, but if we do, Father God, have to elbow and push our way through our own thoughts and through and, 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 and through our own fears, we will do that. And we will get to the hem of your garment. We will get to your feet, dear God. And, and we, will, we, will, we will bathe them with our tears, dear God, and dry them with our garments, Father God. We will do whatever it takes to continue our walk because while we walk, as we walk, we are delivered. We are set free. We are strengthened. And whom the sun sets free is indeed free. And my sister is free in her faith to believe in you for her health and for her strength and for her encouragement. And she has family that is believing and praying in agreement. So I bless my sister Constance. And I thank you for um, a good result. Um, lead the doctors in the way they ought to go. Give them the, the, the wisdom and professionalism and the wherewithal to treat our sister with, with godly care. Dear God, let their hands be the hands of the Lord um, as they minister to her. We thank you for these things. And we look very, very forward to seeing her smiling face among us. Um, as always, dear God, you bring her through and you bring her through with the testimony. Thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Constance, for an opportunity to pray for you. Anybody else we need to pray for before we go? Or anything else needs to be said? Um, if not, um, I'm going to close us with prayer or, or, or actually have uh, one of my brothers close us with prayer. And then I'm going to go put on my Lamar Jackson jersey and, uh, and and watch the end of the Ravens game. You know, y'all be rooting for the Ravens now. You know, you know, you know that, you know, that's that's the team. And uh, anyhow, with all that being said, <laughs> uh, Cody, if you could close us with a prayer, that would be fantastic. Yes, sir. Thank you. You might get uh, JC praying, praying along with me in the background. So, Lord, um, I'm just so encouraged, Father. I'm encouraged, Lord, that you have chosen us, Lord, as 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 vessels of honor, Lord. That you, you have chosen us as members of the body of Jesus Christ. And um, I heard someone someone mention earlier the health of the body. Um, and I recall my brother George saying, heal us, Lord God, heal um, our sister from head to toe. And so I just want to speak that word right now, health, Lord, over this body from head to toe, Lord God. We know that there is health at the head of the body because you are the head, Lord God. And we put our hope and trust in you, Lord God. Just as my sister Katie talked about pressing through, Lord God, to touch your garment, Lord God. We continue to press, Lord, as our pastor has instructed us to keep walking, Lord, because you are our health, Lord God, from head to toe. As your body, Lord, wherever it is that you send us, Lord God, whatever it is that you have so purpose for us to do, Lord, we know that it all starts and ends with the head, the health, Jesus Christ, Lord God. And so let there be health right now in the house and home of every single member of this body. Lord God, let there be health, Father God, in the workplaces of every single member of this body. Let there be health, Father God, in every single place you send us, because wherever you send us, you send Jesus Christ, Lord God. And you've given us your spirit as a guarantee. That's why the word that you gave us this morning resonates, Lord, so loudly and clearly in the heart of every man and woman who heard it because you have filled us with your Holy Spirit. 
This isn't, Lord God, that wasn't a word that could be bound on this earth. That wasn't a word that could be bound in our mind or our emotions, but the Holy Spirit, Lord. So we heard you, Lord, and, and, and um, uh, we just trust, Father God, that you are going to continue to speak to us, Lord, through a teacher who has not allowed it to be about him, but about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. That's the point. That's the entire purpose, Lord. And so we are so grateful. And I thank you, Lord, that we're healthy because the word of God abounds in this body. The word of God abounds in this house, the Father's house. In Jesus' mighty name, we trust you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Cody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for you. Everybody unmute and give God an amen shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi, everyone. Have a good Hi. Sunday. Hi. Thank you. Blessed day. Have a blessed week. Bye.